I'm Dump Truck DS. Welcome back to Mapping for Quake. This is part two of a new lighting tips video. If you haven't seen part one, I highly recommend you watch it first because then you'll know what's going on with this map. All right, take note of this light here. So he's got a, a fixture here that he's created and this light is just 100, right? It's kind of low, but again, if he's at gamma 65, it's not that low, it, it's pretty bright. But when you go to gamma one, it's low. Now, the thing about this texture here is this is not a full bright texture. There's only 256 colors in the Quake palette. And some of those colors, I wanna say uh, maybe 32, I can't remember. But they're full bright, meaning they're, they're always rendered at their maximum brightness. Now this is not, this is one of those uh, textures that doesn't have full bright colors, even though it looks bright. It's just a normal texture and it's gonna accept light in a normal way. Let's swing around this way and we look at this tech texture here. Now these are full bright colors. You don't need to illuminate that, but you still need to put a light, you know, you need to make, have some light generated by that light. So you're gonna see that in a second. Now there's a way that you can set these lights up where it's gonna illuminate this face. Let's take a look at this light. I have a, a light of 600, and then I have what's called an M angle or mangle. <laughs> I, I use M angle, I call it M angle. So M angle, um, and I don't know what the M stands for. But uh, what this does is it gives you yaw, pitch, and roll uh, values that you can enter for this light. And what that does is it, it points the light. So uh, like a spotlight. So what I've done is if you notice here, we have our, you know, compass down here in the lower left and red is always pointing to zero. Green is pointing to 90. And so this is pointing, this edge is pointing to 270. So in that first value, you type in 270 and that points the light in that direction. Now, the reason it's bright, when you focus a light, a spotlight, um, in, in my experience, it kind of uh, dims the light a little bit. So you need to really kind of amp it up and, and make it much brighter. You'll find that when you start using this M angle key, you might not get results, but just try to increase the brightness. I, I usually go like 1200 until well, like, oh, that's way too bright. And then I back it off. It's much easier to find a contrast very quickly and then back down from it with your values. Now, the important thing about this light is not just the M angle, it's also that the weight value is two. So right now I've got a light and it's all this thing does, this is all the function of this light is to illuminate that face because it's not a full bright. So there you go, there's that. This light has a level of 150. The weight is 1.25 because we don't have an M angle set. It's, you know, it's, it's an omnidirectional light. So what weight 1.25 does, it just kind of brings that sphere in a little closer. By the way, if you're unfamiliar with weight and delay, make sure and watch my lighting basics tutorial. You will get so much information. So uh, that's why we're talking about weight and delay like you know what they are. I'm assuming you've seen that and you need to, st you need to stop this video immediately and go watch that and then come back if you haven't seen it. Okay, there's my plug for that. So we have a, a dimmer light that's going out in all directions and the weight is 1.25. Down here, I've put a light on the near the ground that the super shotgun is sitting on. That's important because the, the entities will, you know, especially like pickups, like weapon entities, they will uh, take the light that's uh, on the ground directly below them. So what you wanna do is kind of find a nice style. So what I did was I didn't want it glowing in all these directions, I just want to kind of a really focused little area just to catch the player's attention. So I've, I've made that weight four and that lowers the sphere as I was mentioning earlier. And then the light I played with, you know, quite a bit. I was like, oh, it's 200 is way too bright. Uh, 100 is too, you know, you have to fidget with it. So, I, so 175 felt right to me for something that you want the player to notice. Now he may have wanted this a secret and because it's pitch black in, in the version that I played. So this right here is an ambient fill light. And what that does is just give a hint of light to an area. It's 45, the delay is five, and the weight is 0.15. So the result of this ambient light is that these crate tops are lit up just a tad, just a little bit, just a hint. Um, and what you can do is you can spread these. Once you light your level and you get all your key lights, this would be a key light. You can use these ambient lights to fill in little nooks and crannies. 
you know, you could use the light setting on the world spawn, but you know, that, that does it everywhere across the map. You have much more control if you're just setting these ambient lights here and there. You can just copy them very easily, but hold, hold down control and drag it or copy and paste them wherever you need them. And then of course you can tweak those lights as you go. Lighting is not a quick down and dirty thing. It takes time. It's not going to take as long as building a level. I'm telling you right now, once you get used to these tools and it understand how they work, you're going to light your map fairly quickly. Um, I would say it's about a third of my development time. That's just a guess. I haven't really examined how long it takes to light a map. I just, I'm not in a hurry. I'm just trying to do it right. Let's take a look at this area as it stands in the map as it was released. Wait a second, I do not have all my coffee yet. Okay, there we go. So this is how I'm Mafon saw it. You can see that the face is not illuminated very much. I mean, it's kind of just dull. Whereas this guy is a full bright, nice and nice and bright, and it kind of works with this lighting here. Actually, works nicely. Now we're in the relit version that I've been messing around with, and so we could see that the face of the brush is lit up nicely, kind of similar to that, and that's that one light that's just pointing right at it. And then there's this one, the weight of 1.25 here makes it kind of just uh, uh, not quite as obnoxious of a light uh, source. Here's the shotgun. I've got that weight at four and the value of the light is 175. Now we've got this ambient light and I'm, I know it doesn't seem like I'm doing too much, but remember the, the min light value, it doesn't exist in this map. I, I, tur I turned it off. So there's no light minimum. I had to add this. Originally it was those crate tops were black because this light over here was just kind of shining on that uh, barrel. You want to definitely kind of illuminate the player's path. And I, I could have messed around with this even more. I, if, if this was my map, I would have played with it even more. Uh, but right now this is kind of looking a lot better. And let, let's go look at a, let's look over here at a, a comparison there. You know, you'd have to do something similar. You'd have to illuminate that face, have to a little bit of light coming out, and then you'd want ambient light on these crates. You can see the pickups are full bright, so you're gonna wanna have some ambient light in there illuminating these crate surfaces. It's real easy just to copy and paste this light. You could even copy and paste it a few times. It's there, you know, the light is additive. So you can just kind of put a few in there until they look right, you can position them. So one last thing I want to leave you with is to use the start map as a, as a reference. So I'm going to type in map start. And so when you're mapping, you know, look at how bright this guy is at gamma one. And you're going to want to kind of do that as you're lighting like, oh, wow, it's uh, this is pretty bright. You may not want your level to look like this. I don't. I use a lot of high contrast lighting in my levels, but I try to get to this uh, as far as the brighter, you know, daytime, quote unquote, daytime versions of my map need to be this bright. So this is your reference point. You want to load this at least once a session when you're lighting. That's it for this video. I just want to remind you that this was not intended as this full on advanced lighting tutorial. I think that's going to come down later down the road, probably in the fall. Uh, just, I just don't, I'm not going to have the time to do something that sophisticated, but I thought I'd get this information out here because we had a really good case study that we could use to explain some of these kind of crucial concepts. So this will get you pretty far. These are features that are advanced lighting features that really can add a specific look. And it'll it'll give a modern look to your map. Make no mistake that if you're trying for a retro look, you should probably avoid using these methods. Uh, but you know, this is up to you. Go have fun with it. Go map. Thanks for hanging in there. We'll see you in the next tutorial.